So I've listed out the sample space that are all done. Now I can use that sample space. You can see I used this to make this, and now I'm going to use this to answer this question. What's the probability of getting exactly one tail? Have a look. Have a look. Exactly just one? Just exactly one. So not two or three, which is includes one, but it's not exactly three. one. So how many of them? Can you see them? Okay. One. Three. 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 I can one. see two. one. Two. two. Oh, I get it. Oh, I just like three. Three. Just like you only do it yeah. one. A tail on its own. Exactly yeah. one tail, right? Sorry. Yeah, I get it. As opposed to two. Um, I could say, you'll see the next question. Just when you're ready, Gary. Thanks. You can see it's usually important to interpret the question properly here. And if you interpret the question differently, you answer the question right, but it'll be the wrong question. Okay? These three are all of the ones which have exactly one tail. Have I missed any? I think I've got them all, right? Now, remember I said I haven't labeled any of these branches because they all have the same chance, right? Now, if they all have the same chance and there are eight at the bottom, sorry, at the side, this is how many there are, then this should be, individually, it should be an eighth, right? And this will be an eighth, and this will be an eighth. Do you agree? So what's the probability of getting exactly one tail? Three are favorable, and eight is your total sample space. Okay, so that makes sense. Good. Now, how about we get this last one here? Again, I'm going to use the same tools to help me. What's the probability, here's the question you maybe were thinking of, of getting at least one tail? So that's one tail, or two tails, or three. Okay? That means I'm including a whole bunch more, right? So you have a look and you're like, oh, it's this one, and this one, and this one. It also includes this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay? Now, Think about this for a second. I could, of course, just add all of these up. Right? I could add them all up. But there's something I already know today that can help me do this in a kind of quicker way. Right? The problem of getting at least one tail. What's the complement of that event? What's the only way to not get at least one tail? It's to get no tails, right? Or you could say it alternatively as to get or heads, okay? And you can see it in the list that I've got here. Do you see it? Right? Look, this guy here is the complement. Okay? So at the moment, it's just as easy to say, can someone tell me what the probability is? It's seven out of eight, okay? Now that's very easy here because they all have the same chance, okay? But let's get back to that you know, hypothetical situation I said where it was, um, it's not a called a loaded coin. What's it called? An unfair coin. It's like where the yeah, exactly. Okay, it's um, it's very two-faced, right? Now this is trickier. This is trickier. If I want to work out all these probabilities now, okay, think about this for a second. Because it's not as likely to get a tail, this guy here, this isn't going to be one out of eight anymore, is it? Right? Because it can't be. They're not all the same chance. In fact, that's the most unlikely thing to happen. Do you agree with that? Right? How do I work out the probability of this on my unfair coin? What am I going to do? Do you remember? Do you remember when we were having a look at the Ace of Diamonds um, and the King of Diamonds? Do you remember that? We looked at it and we said, look, there's the word or. There's the word or. That means you, you add them together. Good. But here, this is actually, the way I would write it is actually tail and tail and tail. I'm not tail or tail or tail. I want all of them at the same time, right? So you can see I've got or here, which means add. When you've got and, you want them all combined by multiplication, not addition. So look at these guys, right? A third, a third, a third. I'm going to multiply down these branches, right, like this. Um, what is the probability? A third, a third, a third. I'm multiplying, right? A ninth. Is it a ninth? A third times a third is a ninth. And then I do one more time. The probability of getting tail, tail, tail is 1 out of 27. So you can see here, I could do the same thing to work out the probability of a head, head, head. 
Actually, can you work out the probability of a head, head, head? Wait, so sorry, one second. Yeah. You said it's out of that? Yeah. A third, like a third feet. Like, why yeah. is it out of three a whole, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you feet. asked, right? I'm sort of extending this idea. When you don't see any numbers, that means everything's the same chance, okay? But I got really suspicious because on my first three flips, I got three heads. So I thought, huh, maybe it's not a fair coin. I'm just guessing, okay? I really doubt it. Okay. So therefore, if I start to put numbers on these branches, what I'm indicating is actually they're not all the same chance. Some things are more likely to happen than others, right? So in my imagined scenario, you're twice as likely to get a head than a tail, okay? So therefore, that's where these threes come from. It's not that there are three possibilities. We're saying it's just more likely, right? There's a two-thirds chance. I could make it anything. I could make it four-fifths or, or eleven-seventeenths or something like that. These numbers, they would come from an experiment. They would come from experimental probability. And they're like, well, look, I just flipped this many times, and this is what I observed. Does that make sense? So at the moment, my experiment says you've got a 100% chance of a head at the moment. Because I've only done three flips in the words. Okay, so just to finish off, the probability of getting at least one tail. Here's the way I'd ask you all to write it with me, right? The probability of getting at least um, one tail. This is the complement, this is what we were saying before, is the complement of getting all heads. Do you agree with that? Like, if you get at least one tail, it's the opposite of that, it's getting no tails. It's getting more heads, okay? Um, I've run out of space, so I'm gonna be a bit naughty and do this. So, the probability of getting a head, head, head on a real coin, on, an, on a fair coin, um, should be an eighth, right? Because all of these are the same and there are eight possibilities. So it should be one take away an eighth, right? Which gives me, as you told me before, Seven eighths. One of the ways to know that you're doing a probability question right is you can approach it from lots of different ways. You can think about it from lots of different angles, and you'll still get the same answer. Okay? If you're getting different answers from different ways, then something has gone wrong, and that's a great way to know. Hmm. I need to revisit. Like some assumption I've made is incorrect. Okay?